Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the importance of an indoor air filter to an HVAC system, such as a furnace or air conditioning system. This filter right here came out of a system that had a small return duct, so it was undersized to begin with, and then this filter clogged, and the indoor evaporator coil froze. When the coil freezes, you're wasting electricity, and you can potentially be hurting the outdoor compressor. So the compressor is located in the outdoor air conditioning unit, and if you don't have heat blown across the indoor evaporator coil, the refrigerant does not have heat to absorb, which means it doesn't turn into a vapor before the refrigerant heads out to the compressor. If you have liquid refrigerant heading into a vapor compressor, it damages it. So it may still be running, but it's not going to be running as good as it was before. Depending on the type of metering device you have, this is a TXV metering device at the indoor evaporator coil. This will automatically limit the amount of refrigerant going into the coil, which would limit the amount of liquid refrigerant heading into the compressor in a low airflow situation. But for systems that have a fixed orifice and not this, you're just going to have liquid heading into the vapor compressor. The TXV is not going to stop the liquid refrigerant completely from heading into the compressor. It's just going to limit the amount of liquid refrigerant heading into the compressor in a low airflow situation. This air filter right here ended up killing a blower motor. So it was a variable speed blower motor. And what happens when you have your clogged airflow, a variable speed or ECM multi-speed motor is going to try to push harder to try to get the air into the ductwork. So it has torque value set in, in, in the motor itself, and what's going to happen is going to try to fight against the friction in the ductwork. But what happens is it draws too much amperage and it ends up potentially damaging itself. So in this case, that blower motor got damaged. This happens quite a bit when you have a, a dirty filter, say we're, we're talking about a $1 to say $5 filter killing a, a $500 blower motor. You know, it could be more. I've had them up as $1,000 250 it depends on what type of blower motor you have but those variable speed and ecm blower motors are expensive and you, you want to replace that filter and make sure that you don't have any restrictions in that duct that's going to damage it here is the blower motor that that filter took out so this one right here is a variable speed blower motor this is a psc blower motor and you can tell that because it has a capacitor on it and what happens when you have a airflow restriction with one of these, this motor is just going to be spinning. It's not going to be drawing as much amperage. The, the wheel right here is going to be going faster. But the reason it's going faster is because it's not loaded up with air molecules. And it's not really going to get damaged in a low airflow situation like a ECM motor will. When you have a dirty filter in a furnace, what can happen is you have these high temperature safety switches such as this one right here, this one, here's another limit switch. And, and what happens is if you have airflow restriction, the furnace overheats. And so that's a danger in itself, a gas furnace that overheats, that's no good. Uh, but these right here are there to protect the system. But if there's constantly a dirty filter or low airflow, what's going to happen is these sensors are also going to go bad as well, just due to overheating. Now this filter right here, was in an area where it just got sucked up. It wasn't in a track. It wasn't like locked in place. Basically, once this clogged, the airflow just pushed it up and went around this. So when the airflow went around this, it ended up putting dust on that coil. Now, this isn't that particular coil from that filter, but this is another example that when dust can get around the filter, it's going to accumulate on the wet coil. And if you have no filter there whatsoever, then this is what's going to happen. You're just going to have dust and, and say dog fur or hair. It's all going to accumulate on this wet coil right here and it's going to block the airflow. When that happens, you know, you're not going to be able to cool the building. You're, you're wasting electricity. You are not getting vapor back to the compressor and you could damage the blower motor. So there's multiple reasons why you want to keep a clean air filter and make sure that your ducts are sized properly for an air conditioning system and also for a furnace. Now a furnace is going to have a secondary heat exchanger that may look very similar to, to this coil right here. So you can see I'm, I'm having a hard time even scraping some of this stuff off. It's dry and it's really caked on there. But it's going to have fins a lot of times and a furnace, even without an air conditioning evaporator coil, could have dust clogging the secondary heat exchanger. If you have an 80% efficient furnace, the dust is just going to blow through right through there and right back into your supply ducts. 
But when this dust accumulates on this coil, you're going to have low temperature refrigerant and this whole thing is just going to freeze solid. At some point, that's going to have to thaw out and it's going to thaw out outside of the condensate pan. And then if, especially when this type of evaporator coil is on top of a uh, furnace, it's going to melt all down the inside of the furnace. And that's not good for all of your electrical components. So the reason for the filter is to keep the, the dust off of the evaporator coil and to keep the dust off of the furnace heat exchanger so the furnace doesn't overheat, the evaporator coil doesn't freeze, you don't damage your blower motor, you don't damage your compressor, and you don't damage any of the electrical sensors inside the system. If you want to learn more about troubleshooting airflow problems, check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. In this book, we go over the preparation of a system for refrigerant, checking the refrigerant charge, and also troubleshooting using the gauge set. We have the book and the full outline available over at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.